Good day, lords and ladies. Today we have a special little something. I almost didn't see this. This almost completely escaped me, like almost flew under my radar. But they, uh, they came up with a nice little update which says some great things for you Empire players and implies some things that I had suspected. It's been a while since we made our first cryptic announcement to the return of the old world in 2019. Many of you have clamored to know more, and now is the time for Rob of the Old World Studios to explore the gripping settings of Warhammer Old World in more detail than ever before. We've hinted at unprecedented amounts of work that have gone into the new game and setting in candlelit scenery behind the great oaken portcullis doors of the Warhammer Studio. The Old World team has dedicated countless hours to research and playtesting. Our goal was to create a game that captures the best elements of all the editions of Warhammer Fantasy Battles, but at the same time, providing some new exciting rules, fresh challenges to overcome. The Old World One of the most important aspects of Warhammer The Old World is the setting itself. Obviously, this is a world that was. A world of legend, destroyed by the machinations of the ruinous powers of chaos and accumulation of the end times an event that doomed the denizens of the Old World to oblivion and heralded the new birth of the mortal empires or of the mortal realms and the Age of Sigmar. It is important to remember, though, that even though the setting is returning, these events still happened and the Old World was destroyed. The end times had been uh, long foreshadowed in the background of Warhammer fantasy battles. So a lot of people are really upset about that, that, you know, the end times still happen and Age of Sigmar is still canon in the same universe. I don't see what the big deal is because this takes place a couple hundred years beforehand, so it, it hardly even seems relevant. I don't see why people care. The Great War Against Chaos With the end of the world well documented, the design team wanted to explore the earlier history of the old world in more depth to examine events in the history of Warhammer in more detail than ever before. But which part of its long storied history should they focus on? Go too far back in time to the War of the Beard? Or to the time of Sigmar, for example, and the setting would have and the setting would have become unfamiliar. This led us to events well known in the old world: the Great War Against Chaos and the Siege of Prague, two centuries before the end times. They have confirmed what everybody already knew, and they've finally confirmed that yes, this is going to be about that invasion just before Magnus the Pious has been it gets elected as as the emperor more precisely we decided to look at the decades prior to the legendary world changing event in those years before the chaos lord asavar Kal led his army south against the nations of men and dwarves the empire of man was not a united nation that bravely faced <coughs> faced the faced the armies of archeon and the players of the warhammer fantasy battle will remember instead it was deeply divided and ravaged by the war following long centuries without unifying presence of a, of a single emperor anarchy in the empire they, they go on to say uh, who is in charge of each of the largest factions in the emperor and there is four at this particular time uh, the westerland which is uh marienburg is the capital uh the county of osterland which has Middenland as a capital. This is one I'm most excited for. I've always liked the Cult of Ulrich. Principality of Reichland, where, you know, Altdorf is the capital there. And the Duchy of Tabak, where Ta Talbheim is the capital there. And something that this strongly implies, something that I had, you know, long suspected but didn't have any, you know, firm knowledge about, is that each army book will likely have four little divisions in there so you can either make up your own army with the rules or you can be like oh i want to have a midland themed army and you'll get a small bonus for having midland theme you know in 40k they do it with each faction where you can uh, kind of make your own with a mishmash of stuff or you can go with one of the lore friendly options and you get something really good so i suspected they were going to do this and this strongly implies that they will be doing that I'm really excited for this. This is a small update, but everyone who's excited for the Empire, I'm sure, is just ecstatic about this. They're going to have, instead of just a paint scheme separating your Empire army from other Empire armies, you are likely going to have a couple of additional rules to give you an edge that fits your playstyle, and I think that's fantastic. I, I feel like, with everything they've released about this so far, it seems like it's more of a passion project than just you know, a quick cash grab, 
and I really hope that it turns out to be a fantastic game. But anyways, that's uh, all I have for you today, and I gotta get back to work, because YouTube doesn't pay my bills.